I just haven't been uh, streaming because I put the new PC in. Now, <laughs> some of you are going to have a laugh at this. I built this dolly skateboard thing. Uh, brought the PC down, forgetting how bloody huge it was. Put it on the dolly, it won't go under the desk because of the scaffolding uh, is in the way. You know, when I made this desk. I could move the desk down a whisker. I just don't want to do that. Then it's happy there. <laughs> the other reason is the HDMI keyboard cables from the telly and all the cables are perfect for that location. So what I've done, all I need to do is move the microphone out of the way and I can rotate the PC to get to the back, but it's all working. There's three serial ports in here. There's a bloody two actually. When I bought the new machine, I asked, uh, I, I bought this, which had two serial ports and a parallel port. I don't need the parallel port, so I just left that off. But I installed it, I can't find the drivers anywhere, and you get this tiny little disc thing with it. So I'm gonna have to find a way of putting that onto a memory card. A little stick so I can get the proper truck. It won't work. I had to buy a little USB to RS232 because we're running three serial ports here. On the one hand, we've got, on the top right, we've got this, uh, you know, the, the, the software, and that needs its own port. And then N1MM needs its own port. You can virtualize these things, can't you? You can do. Um, you can share serial ports. I can. I just thought I'd buy another one. 15, 12 pounds, I think it was. And then the ACOM itself, uh, which is currently disconnected. <laughs> but we can uh, boot it up, actually. That's got it's another serial port, um, thinking about it, for the, for the control. But I've got a little relay which I can, I can fire that up. Which, because you, I spend a lot of time remotes, you see. This whole, you know, world is, is, is about remote control. And now, while I was at it, I said I was gonna clear everything off the desk, and I did. So all we've got now is the 990, a pair of monitors. I put the speaker here, you know, why not? Then I've got my old CB radio, which has never been used. <laughs> but we will plumb that in eventually and the 9700 and I've got some antennas and stuff for that. So the power supply used to annoy me. As soon as you start drawing more than about three amps, I think the, the temperature sensor, the mist, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's adjusted wrongly. Because as soon as you start drawing three or four amps, the fan comes on and it's blooming loud. However, under the desk here, I built another big dolly to put all my batteries on. It's got the Victron charger power supply plus the batteries. So I'm good for a couple of hundred amps, you know. The Victron itself will deliver 30 amps solid plus the batteries for top up. But I want to be able to switch it on and off. I want to be able to go batteries on, batteries off. So I went to RS Components, which is uh, it's an electronic distributor in the UK. And I bought two little relays. Here they are. Uh, the idea being that um, uh, it took me ages to find the right clickety clocks. Oh, I think. Yeah, they do go on. Ah, there. So I'll put these in a little box, something like like this. A dab of hot glue to hold them in place. And these are relays for both the 12 volt. Uh, red and black, positive and negative. But to switch these on, we'll use one of the Shelly ones we've got. Uh, so and I can disconnect the batteries from all the equipment remotely, like I've just done with the with the Acom 2000 here, which has got 12 seconds to go. So that has an interesting project just in itself, to be able to disconnect the batteries from the gear remotely while keeping it still on charge. But I think I'll put another Shelly one in so I can take it off charge as well. Right, now we can connect to the amplifier. There we are. And uh, we could go to standby and we're, we're on board. Lovely. Let's just uh, disconnect. Let me just disconnect that, actually. Disconnect. I normally keep it like this, so you can just see the bar graph. But there we are. Let me just switch it off. 
Django, when he hears that sound, he thinks it's time to go out to the field. I use Sonopass for, uh, have I got it running at the moment? For my remote audio. And here it is here. And I can connect, and I connect to the group M0XXT with this password. So I connect to the group. And then at home, I do the same, and then connect. And you can see the meters here, left and right. And if you look at the audio here, on the, uh, not the audio, the signal strength on the left and right meters, you can see the signal strength on the left of the TS990 is stronger than the right. And sure enough, I'm in stereo in other words. But anyway, I really like the two VFOs in parallel together to get that real stereo feel. Put your headphones on uh, when you listen to that. It's quite interesting. But I couldn't get it out of mono. I've spent 72 hours now. I just did it last night, which is why I'm making this video, because we're completely cleared up. So we've got the amplifier bottom left, we've got the battery bottom right, one big radio, VHF CB. That's, that's to happen. Uh, we've got the relays here. We've got John Gendron's triangular array remote switch box. However, there's nothing in there apart from three Wi-Fi controlled relays. But I think we'll put that on 20 meter band because I spoke to Tim and Scott at DX Engineering and they're sending over a four square for 40 meters. However, that's got a manual switch box. So I've spoken to, I think it's George, can't remember his name, EA4TX. He does a little box and he'll program that for me. So I'll be able to manually um, switch it from the software, you know, with my mouse, which is pretty good. I gotta say the other thing is uh, I was using Chrome Remote Desktop for this when I was at home. And, and I'll try, I'll put a shot of Chrome Remote, uh, Remote Desktop on the screen now. I render in 4K, so you'll probably, you'll probably only tell the difference if you switch to a big monitor here, but this is Chrome Remote Desktop. And then I'll switch to TeamViewer. Okay, this is TeamViewer now. And what I found is that TeamViewer has a better quality on the, um, you know, it's, it's rendering on the remote desktop. So it's probably not, lot, lot, blah, probably not a lot in it. Chrome remote desktop, TeamViewer. But you probably need a very crisp 27 inch monitor. But what I can tell when I'm, I'm watching it's less blurry, it's really nice. All works okay on the fact the Samsung G track Pro I have to manually unplug it and plug it back in for Windows to recognize it so I don't know if I've got an old driver for that or something and now you will remember when I did the uh, the full tour and we did the relays we did uh, how to make it a desk we did the sound conditioning and all sorts of stuff I said I'm gonna get rid of all my shit well in fact what I did is I bought a load of boxes and labeled everything. I have even labeled the label printer, okay? I've put everything in boxes. I'm absolutely delighted. And sure enough, I was after a main feed the other day and I thought, oh, I wonder where it could be. And I thought, well, I've got a box marked mains, mains leads. And sure enough, it was in there. Fantastic. So clear plastic boxes, I think is the key if you've got a lot of trinkets. And that's about it. That's the reason why I haven't been around because this has taken me a couple of weeks getting the old machine in and the new machine in getting the old machine out and the new machine in by the way doing a bit of experiment this morning it's a sunday morning right now this is one of my canon 80d cameras with quite a cheap lens on it actually it's a 10 to 18 4.5 f 4.5 lens um because i'm fed up with a bloody gopro uh, it just can't cope with the 50 hertz. I think even though you go flick, flicker 50 hertz, it's still, you get bands going up and down. So the GoPro we will keep for outside only. And if this works, we'll get hold of another Canon 80D. So you can have maybe one up looking down instead of this here. This is the B-roll at the moment has been handled by this tiny little um, DJI pocket. There we are. As if you'd be interested in that. So we've got the triangular array to put in. We've got the four square to put in. I've still got to build a flamethrower. 
and a few other antennas. I want a cage vertical for 80. Big mono bander, huge thing. All right, right in the middle of the antenna field. And I think we'll put the four square all the way around it for 40. And then for the other bands, we'll have to put a smaller DX commander up in the corner. Of course, the nice thing is with uh, the, the antenna switch, we'll be able to, you know, compare them all and have some fun. VFOA, VFOB. Good fun, eh? All right, that's it. Enjoy your radio, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye for now. CQ, hello.